why would you create a WordPress website when you can just use your class LMS instead? Now, I'm a big proponent for LMS use. I have a whole video about you know, using basics and more advanced features of it, which I'll link below. But I will admit that there can be times when the LMS system just shuts down or breaks down for various reasons, right? Especially now when so many classes are quickly going online or into hybrid form. So if you're worried that you know, there's gonna be that problem of either slowness or you know, breaking down of the LMS, you might consider having either all of it on a WordPress site or just part of your class on the WordPress site. And so in today's video, I'm gonna basically show you how you can very easily design a WordPress website and then you can put in, especially your materials, right? So you might not have your students place their materials on this site because it's public, but you can do just, you know, post you know, all the lessons, all the homework assignments, um, information about your lectures, if you have PowerPoint lectures, the videos you've created, whatever the case may be. And it could be a very organized and very user-friendly way of having students know that even if, you know, something goes wrong with your LMS or with your university, you know, institutional website, you can easily go to WordPress and find what they need there. Okay. All right, so this is the dashboard of WordPress.com, not WordPress.org. .org is self-hosting. This is just .com, which is a free website that you can create or that you can have your students create. And so to give you some examples, I have two uh, free websites that I've created. This one I use when I taught English 101 at ISU. I was teaching multimodal composition. And so I created this blog because my students were each creating individual blogs about a topic that interested them. So here's one design kind of show you what we have going on. And then this is another free WordPress site that I created uh, when I was doing a MOOC. And so we had to create an ePortfolio, and so I chose to use WordPress for this as well. So here's another one that I created. As you can see, a very different design. And so there are a lot of themes, right, different designs and structures for the websites that you can use completely for free. And then I have obviously my actual official website and blog. This one is self-hosted on WordPress.org. Uh, through SiteGround, but you know I want to show it to you as well because there is a lot of similarity in how you can use them. Uh, so you can do something along these lines where you have, let's say, um, on the main page, the sidebar, right? Um, all of this is possible with the free version depending on what theme you choose. You can have a sidebar like this even though I don't have it in the other two examples. So just to give you an idea of you know, what's possible with WordPress. I find it to be very user friendly. One of the reasons I'm not doing a tutorial on how to actually create one of these websites is because WordPress has such detailed tutorials already available. Uh, so if you do want me to do one specifically for some reason, let me know what kind of information you'd want to see in a WordPress tutorial and I'll make sure to work on that for you. But going back to the dashboard, right? Um, once you're signed into WordPress.com, you can you see this page. So you might see Reader automatically, and this shows you older posts uh, that you've created or uh, that's been created by people you follow. But the important part here is to go to my site, and you can choose which site you want to focus on. This is the class I taught. I could, I could switch it to Happily Learning. I'll keep it here. And one thing that's important to note is if you go to the settings, you know, you put in obviously your site title and tagline, etc. But one thing you can do here is the privacy settings. And so you can keep it hidden, you know, in case you're still building it. It can be public, uh, so anybody can see it if they come across it. I put here, you know, don't let search engines index it because I don't want it to be that searchable, but it is public, so it can be found. Or it can be private, which is how I originally had it. So when students created their blogs, they had it on private. So the only ones who can see it are those who are logged into WordPress and who you, you had approved of being able to see your site. And so each student had it private. And so during one class period, I just had them all go to our sites, right? And they clicked either the following here, if they had this follow button that they added to um, their website, or usually, thing is, you see my editing thing, you'll see like a follow button on the bottom here that shows you um, the option of following this person. And so it, you don't have to have this button, a follow button will appear you know, if you're not logged in this way. So keep that in mind. And so once they said, you know, I wanna follow 
all of my classmates, then the classmates got notifications like, this person wants to follow you, do you accept? And so they accepted all their classmates and myself to be able to see what they had created. And so that's one way of making sure that it's not completely open to the public unless that is something that you want to do when you talk about you know, public writing and internet safety and all that jazz. I just wanted, I, do, I did want to point that out um, before I got into the rest of this video. And so just for some ideas of how to use WordPress, something to consider is, you know, in this one, what I have here on the side are different categories. And the categories, as you can see, are different modules of learning. So in, you know, regular teaching ways, probably units, right? Units one through four, or one through three, one through six, whatever the case may be. And so you can have this categories in your sidebar and your students can know, okay, well, I'm gonna go here to unit one and in unit one, they'll find all the material you created for them about, you know, things that happen in that module, right? So maybe unit one is about creating an annotated bibliography, right? And so maybe you have a blog post with resources on how to do it and you have a blog post with tips and you have a blog post with an article they had to read you know, all that jazz, you can have all that listed under the category of unit or module one, and they can find it all here, right? And so I have here just short versions of it, and then they'd have to click continue reading in order to see the whole post, okay? So that's one option here is doing, you know, the categories of each unit that you teach and putting all your resources in that unit for them to see very easily. Okay, so that's one option. I do have tags as well. And so you might just want to do categories, but maybe for each blog post, you might have a few tags. So maybe you have a tag, you know, journal article, or you have a tag video, right? And so they know what modality these resources are in. So they see if they remember, oh yeah, there's a video that Mr. Merrill had showed us before, but I can't remember what it's called or what unit it's in. If they go to the tag called video, they can find it much more easily than having to go through the whole website, okay? And so on this main page, I actually have every single module listed. These are what they were called. And so you can also arrive at them by clicking on them, right, on the titles. So that's one approach to organizing your website for teaching purposes. Have the different units of teaching and include all your resources in it. Okay? Another option is to, do, to use your navigation bar in that same way. So rather than having your blog post in categories, you might have, okay, well, I'm going to have a page for each unit, right? So rather than discover blog and about me, you'd have unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four. And so when they clicked it, they go to the page where you list all the resources, right? So maybe, you know, you go to, I'll just click here, right? So this is the about me page. Pretend this is unit one. Then you have here, you might have, you know, week one, Monday, and underneath Monday, you link the resources for Monday's class, and you might have, you know, here's what the homework is, okay? And then on unit two up here, you'd start, you know, week five, now Monday, here's the homework, here are the resources. And so it's a way of organizing your information. Uh, in a very similar way that I do on my LMS using the uh, elements tool, sorry, the lessons tool to organize what I teach, you know, this can be very similar to that experience, okay? And so keep in mind, so you can do the categories or you can do different pages. If you go back to customize and you click menu, primary, right? So these are the three that we have here. What you can do is you can add an item and you can actually add a category to your menu. And so in that case, when you see it, module one is here rather than in the sidebar. Uh, so when I said here where you have, you know, different pages, the social justice, gender diversity, and sexuality, rather than have them as pages, you can have them as categories because then the blog post will appear directly there when you click, you know, that particular por portion of the menu. So if you had it just as a page, then on the page, you'd have to link to every individual blog post. Whereas if you use the category as part of the menu, then it automatically shows all the blog posts when you click that particular category on the menu bar. So that's kind of a shortcut in order to make sure that everything's organized very easily on your website. 
Now, let's say you're, so for this example, I was creating a blog because my students were creating blogs. And so, you know, in this case, I can go ahead and create a blog post. I was showing them examples of what they were creating, right? Um, and I was talking about it with them. So here are some examples of multimodal writing, just to give you a sense of the variety of it. Or I had here, okay, well, we talked about chat, which is a theoretical framework we used in our program. So here we go. I'm going to talk about every, all the seven elements of chat and give an example. And I created the infographic using Canva. I have a tutorial for that that I can go, I'll go ahead and list in the description below. But they can go ahead and see all this information for them, right? And so it wasn't something that they were adding to. It was my personal blog. But what you can do is you can have your students create a blog themselves, right? Or you can do it together. And so there's two approaches here. You might consider, like I said, having each student create an individual blog about a topic that they you know, have of interest and then just have them you know, post new material throughout the whole semester. Or you can create a class blog. And so to do this, when you sign into WordPress.com, you can just use a username and password. It doesn't have to be an email address. So as a class, you can decide, okay, what's our blog going to be called? What's our username going to be? And then everybody will have a password as well. And so what they can do is they can log in to the website and they can add their material. So rather than having, you know, like I said, the, you know, discover blog and about me, if they had unit, you know, unit one, two, three, and four, they can each post, here's my, you know, infographic that I created for unit one. And then you have 30 blog posts, one for each student, under that unit one. Okay, and unit two, they had to create an annotated bibliography, so each of them post their annotated bibliography, right, on the same website. So you can organize it that way. Or you might have, okay, well, our, our class is about young adult literature, and we're going to focus on three themes. We're going to focus on social justice, about... Um, I don't know, social justice, gender, diversity, and sexu sexuality, right? And so you might have here are those three topics in the navigation menu or in categories. And then if they're creating material based off of those three topics, then they organize it that way. And so maybe, okay, well, for unit one, they're required to create an infographic, but they can choose which of the three topics they want to, you know, create an infographic for. And so when they sign in onto the, the website, they say, okay, well, I created an infographic about social justice, so I'm going to go ahead into that page or into that category and add my infographic there. Okay, and so you can organize by topic rather than by unit to make it a bit more user friendly for the audience, right? So if the audience is intended to be people interested in that literature and in these themes, then that makes it more user friendly than just having unit one through four and there's a mix, right, between them. Unit one will have all three types of topics listed because of how students created, you know, chose what topic to create. Why not actually have the menu items be these topics so it's easier to find for someone who's not part of the class and so that's kind of a question that you can ask yourself as far as de developing them into units or developing them into themes something to consider if you're you know weary of having all students use the same username and password because what if they're logging in for each other and like things could be, be a bit messy there um, hopefully you can have a good honest policy with your students but there's another option here. So if you go back to your dashboard and you go to manage and you click people, you end up here. And so obviously this is mine, uh, but you can go ahead and invite and you could add your, your students' usernames. So if they each created a WordPress account, then you could add their usernames or their emails and they can go ahead and choose, okay, well, can they, ha do they have full power, right? Are they just an editor? Are they the author? Are they contributor? Okay, uh, you can kind of figure out how much you want to give them, how much power you want to give them, as far as the the blog and website goes, right? Um, so you probably want to choose author here, so that they can write, upload photos to, edit, and publish their own posts, but they can't actually, you know, access all the other posts and pages. So this could be a good one to choose, and then you you know you send invitations to your students. And so that way, there's no concerns of, okay, well, they can't actually interact with each other's blog posts. Of course, if you're doing peer review or editing, then that means you have to do it outside the website. 
but it is definitely, I think, safer than just having all of them use the same username and password. So those are the basic two ways that you can use a WordPress site. Either use it for yourself in order to create instructional materials for your students or create some kind of version where they're actually posting things to the website either together on one website or having to create individual ones. Of course, if you create individual ones, it worked for me and my students because the whole course was about creating a blog and about writing because it was a writing course. But if that's not the case for you, then it might be best to have, you know, let's spend a week or two designing and, you know, creating one website for ourselves that we can each post to because then teaching them how to use it is much simpler. And so again, I'm not doing an actual tutorial on how to, you know, create things on this site, but I did want to show you, you know, if you go to tools, right, there's, you can't add plugins on the free version, okay? So you can't do as much as you would if you were paying for it. But, you know, there's still this element of you can really design your website to look exactly how you like. So when you go to themes, you can say, okay, like, how do I want it to look? Okay. And so as a class or individually, you can choose the design and the layout of your particular website. Okay. Um, if you go ahead and go to, like, here's my current one is rolling, and you customize it, then there's a lot that you can decide as a class or again, or as an individual. Okay. So what color and backgrounds do you want? What fonts are you using? You know, what does the menu look like? Right. Um, where does the menu appear? So depending on the theme is, you know, how you how much flexibility you have but you know one thing to consider here is widgets is the one where you add things to the sidebar or to the footer okay right so I have a follow button I have an image I have text which is the about me categories etc etc so when you're creating your own uh, sidebar or footer you can just click add a widget and you can see all the options on here there are actually quite a few so you can add music to yours you can add statistics, a calendar for posting. You know, you definitely have a lot that you can do here as far as connecting things to the sidebar or to the footer of your particular website. Okay, so you can customize and then once you make changes, you just go ahead and save them at the top here. Now for the site itself, here's what you would use to create different pages or different posts, add media, you look at the comments. And so the pages are the ones that appear right at that navigation bar. So these are three pages that I have here. Um, rather than this look, which is, you know, quite different. I have here, you know, here are my pages that you can see on the top versus the ones you see here. So that's just a difference in themes. But you can go ahead and add in as many pages as you want. You can save them as drafts and then eventually publish them. You could schedule them to go up at a certain time, right? Uh, post as well. You go ahead and you add a new post and you can do tons to it. And so it's a very user-friendly experience because it just uses the block editor. So when you go ahead and go here, you add a title, you can just type text, but if not, you click the plus sign and you decide, you know, what kind of thing are you creating? Are you adding an image? business hours, a contact form, right? Um, so a lot of these, you might have to access different websites and tools, and you, I'm not sure if they're all available on a free account, but you can definitely have a lot of things list here versus just paragraph, adding a quote, adding in code if your students are coders. And so there's plenty here for them to choose from as far as what to add. You can add videos. So, you know, you can go ahead and go there. One thing, just to, so you know, if you do more, so the more tag is that tag where you have the continue reading. So the reason that these are so short rather than the full blog is because I have a more tag that ends up looking like this. So you go ahead and add it to it so that you know that anything above will appear on the regular blog page and anything below, would you have to click into that particular post to see the full thing. So I think that's an important one to know when you're creating them. And so you can go ahead and look at the document page and you go here and the permalink, they can title it whatever they'd like for the URL, right? Um, so this can be a great one to do. They can choose what category the blog post falls into. They can add tags, they can add a featured image. You know, so the sky's the limit here really. They can choose when it's published, you know, who can see it and all that. 
So um, that's how you add into the, the website, either pages or posts. If you have any questions, comment with them below, especially if you have a certain feature you want me to talk about in a later video when it comes to WordPress and using it this way. And if you haven't clicked like or subscribe yet, go ahead and do so now before you leave the video. I have a few other videos that you might find helpful, so go ahead and check those out too.